Hello. Welcome to Verbling. Hi there. I am Teacher Oakley. And for the next hour, we're going to have some fun playing some word games, mix and match with colloquial English. Okay. Well, first of all, what does that mean? Oh, colloquial. When I looked up the definition of colloquial for class, it was defined as conversational or casual informal English. Which is all well and good, but there are also, when I looked in the Theosaurus for synonyms, uh, in addition to the words I just gave you, it also included dialect um, and regional. Uh, because colloquial English is conversational English, and because, of course, different uh, areas of English speakers around the world, and if I go to Wales, or I go to Scotland, or I go to New England in America, or I go to the Deep South in America, or Manitoba in Canada, there is uh, definitely an element of dialect. We have shared, common, casual conversation phrases uh, and such. So colloquial English, yes, it is conversational English, but in addition, there is an element, uh, or one thing that you should know, there is an element of regional uh, colloquial expressions. Some, you know, uh, I'm from New England, so, you know, we we use the adjective wicked. Oh, wicked good. I had a wicked good time at your party. Okay, well, they don't say that in southern states. They don't say that out west. It's very Boston, Massachusetts, and New England. <laughs> anyway, there's a degree of regionality and, and dialect when we're talking about colloquial expressions. Uh, enough about that. Uh, welcome to the class. Hello, Gregory. Good Hello. morning. Good morning. How are you today? I'm fine. I have a uh, good class, interesting uh, uh, 20 question game. Oh yeah? oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. But, uh, no, I uh, prefer to something serious. Okay. Okay, I, I don't know how serious this is. <laughs> we're, we're basically vocabulary conversation. We're, we're looking at very casual expressions, very normal expressions in conversational English. But anyway, welcome to the class. Uh, hello, Norell. Hello, hello. Hi, teacher. How are hello, you today? Hello, hello. I'm doing quite well. How are you? I'm doing okay. All things considered. Oh, Thank you. All things considered, there's a colloquialism right there. Uh, yeah, but I didn't understand it. But, but you I'm, didn't understand it. Yeah, oh. that's why I'm here today. Okay. Well, uh, okay, there we go. There's a good start. Uh, Narelle asked me how I'm doing, and I said, oh, I'm doing okay. All things considered. This phrase, all things considered, it, like many coll colloquial phrases, is used to be a little bit cute, a little bit humorous, lighthearted, uh, facetious, maybe slightly sarcastic. Uh, okay, all things considered, meaning, uh, well, looking at the big picture, I guess I'm doing okay. Uh, I, I'm just being a little bit facetious, a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Actually, a lot of colloquialisms are like that there. There's an element of irony or sarcasm or just being cute. Okay. Not always, but many times. Uh, just a common expression. Uh, you know, uh, it's funny. Colloquialisms include all those things that we say, you hear native speakers say, uh, when you say, when we greet each other, hello, how are you doing? All right, we don't want to say exactly the same thing every time because that's boring for the listeners. It's also boring for us. So uh, actually there's a whole group of colloquialisms about answering that question. Hello, how are you? We don't answer the same way every time. 
I might say, for example, good new. This is very New England where I'm from. Good new. <laughs> Sounds like one word. Good and you. Good and how are you? Good new. Yeah. There's a classic from where I live. Good new. Uh, um, okay, I, I might say uh, something silly like, uh, 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 oh, I'm just ducky. Oh, uh, very British colloquialism. Ducky, how are you today? Oh, I'm just ducky. <laughs> I'm just ducky, mate. Uh, oh, what did my British um, colleague uh, teacher say? Tickety boo, tickety boo. <laughs> how are you today? Tickety boo. All right. Tickety boo. Tickety boo. Yeah, that's very British. You would never hear an American saying that. Okay, there's an element of dialect. What does it mean? Uh, I, you know, I don't know for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I got the impression that it meant like uh, very similar to I'm just ducky. Uh, I'm doing well. It's positive. In other words, it's it's a positive answer to how are you today. Please, how do you spell it? Tickety boo. Uh, oh, you're gonna have to ask one of the British teachers. But I think no, the other one. I'm ducky. Oh, ducky. Okay. Ducky. Yeah, actually, all right. Verbally, chat's working. That's that's a good sign. We're off to a good start. <laughs> oh, did you guys hear that outside? Yes. You guys want some ice cream? Yes. Ice cream's coming. Yes. <laughs> no. cream? Here in the Philippines, it's called dirty ice cream. Likely as not, the flavors might be queso, which is cheese ice cream and maybe maize, which is corn ice cream. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, wow. Yeah, they have weird flavors here. <laughs> uh, sorry, about ducky. What does yeah. it mean? I'm just ducky. Again, uh, uh, I wonder if you look it up in the dictionary, but uh, it's a definitely positive. Ducky is very positive. I'm upbeat, happy, energetic. Like a baby duck, I guess. Maybe they uh, do they take this word from the story, the children's story, Ducky Ducky Goose. <laughs> ducky Ducky Goose Goose. Uh, I have no idea. And actually, okay, that's another interesting aspect of colloquialisms because they're casual, conversational. It is very often hard to track down the etymology, the history. Uh, some t now, colloquial expressions can be, j all right, they can be collocations or groups of words, just normal words put in a certain way, or they can be idiomatic, uh, or they can be nonsense, tickety-boo, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, Sometimes these are gen we can't tell where they're generated. Sometimes uh, colloquial expressions may come and go in English. They may be popular for a while and then go away. Uh, okay, if you ask me how I'm doing, if, you know, it's 1971, I might say groovy. I'm groovy. <laughs> But it's not 1971, so nobody says that anymore. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I might greet you by saying "What's up," which is which originated in a commercial back in the 1980s. So for a, a stretch of years, I don't know, five to ten years, it would be very common on an American street to hear "What's up," "What's up." Not so much anymore. It's kind of history. So, colloquial expressions come and go. Uh, let me greet Zingyu. Zingyu, good morning. Or, yeah, good Hello, morning. Hello, Tuva. Long time no see. Well, not really. <laughs> well, there's a colloquialism. Zingyu greets the class. Long time no see. Very common. Uh, 
shortened. Now, it's not really an, an idiom, long time, no see. It's kind of a shortened version of a sentence, a collocation. Very good. Excellent example, Zingyu. Good, good entrance to today's class. Very common to say, um, and even though Zingyu and I saw each other yesterday, it really has not been a long time. But it would still be common to say, very ordinary. Good job. Okay. All right, hang on. I'm going to do a little screen share with you guys. We're going to do a little work here. We're going to do a little mix and match work, see what, what you guys know with colloquialisms. As soon as I can get my technological act together here. Come on. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, we're going to do a little mix and match work here. All right, these are two parts of a conversation. On the, on the left column, one, two, three, four, five, six, person A says this, and then the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, person B would reply with this in a casual conversation. Let's see if we can work some of these out. If we have any questions, we'll talk about them. Uh, Gregory, let's start with you. How would you answer if I said, well, the thing is, I don't quite know how to put this. Uh, maybe if he was really cut up about it. Uh, I don't think so. Let's examine it a little. The thing is, okay, let's examine this a little closer. Here's, There's actually a couple of uh, colloquial expressions here. The thing is, we, we say this <laughs> uh, when we're trying to stall, when we're trying to delay uh, what we're saying. Well, and we even say it slow sometimes with intonation. The thing is, uh, actually, <laughs> okay, and then uh, I don't know how to put this. All right, I don't know how to say this. Another delaying tactic. Uh, do you have a second guess? Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, um, uh, I, it's reactions. Uh, a, B, C, D. It's reactions of this. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, maybe D. Come on. Speed it out. I won't get... Uh, no, 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 sorry. No. That's it. You got it. Okay, again, a couple more sort of uh, colloquial expressions. Come on. Meaning, uh, hurry up, just do it. Come on, spit it out. Okay. Obviously not literal. Not uh, If I tell someone to spit it out, I mean, just say it. All right. Very good. That's it, exactly. All right. Good. Uh, Norel, what are you trying to yes. do? Number two, I hear you aren't going out with Bill anymore. Yeah. Okay, so I thought I was going to do it a bit. Okay, that's all right. We just need to hit it off. Maybe E E. Very good. That's exactly right. Okay, going out with. All right, I can look at this as being a colloquialism. I can also look at this as being a three-word phrasal verb. I have a verb, go, <coughs> excuse me, and then I have two particles, a.k.a., also known as prepositions. In this case, they're used as adverbial particles, uh, out and with, going out with, which means, Norell, you're going out with someone. Uh, dating someone. Dating someone. Exactly correct. That's right. And then uh, if you don't hit it off, you it can be then negative. Didn't hit it off or do hit it off. Uh, you didn't one. get along together. Very Okay, <laughs> use another phrasal verb to define a phrasal verb. I do that all the time. <laughs> Sometimes it can't be helped. 
All right, if you hit it off, you, you get along together, uh, you uh, can relate to each other and be friendly with each other. And, you, and because it has hit, it, it means it usually has an element of quickly. Uh, we often say this when we first meet someone, or like first date or second date, I don't know. Okay, anyway. Sing you, try number three. We stayed at the best hotel in town. Uh, no colloquial language there, that's pretty straightforward. How might you respond to that, Zing you? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Not a good answer. <laughs> okay. We've used D and E. Uh, no, sorry. Yes, D and E. That's right. We've used D and E already. So which one of the other answers? You can take a guess. 25% chance of being B. right. That B. must have sent you back a bit. Okay. And actually, you are correct. Um, Set you back, <laughs> and uh, set you back. Many times, uh, I think I demonstrated this earlier when I said "good new." Many times, colloquial expressions, groups of words, phrases, are they become colloquial and they become very common in use because we can join them very, very closely. So, set you back might sound like that. Um, reduce pronunciation, joining sounds, okay. Uh, first of all, what does that mean? Zingya, set you back, do you know? Set you, set you back. Delay. Uh, not, no. Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> it can mean that. You're actually you are right. It it can mean. Oh, that set us back an hour. Um, yes, it absolutely can mean that. Uh, but in this case, it means it cost you a lot of money. Okay, so I bought a new Lamborghini. It set me back a hundred thousand dollars. All right, it cost me. It costs you. It costs you an leg and arm, an arm and leg. <laughs> yeah, right. Other way. Okay, it costs an arm and a leg. That's exactly right. But uh, okay, what I, as far as pronunciation, just a, a couple quick elements because you're going to see this in uh, colloquial expressions a lot, right? In reduced English speaking. Uh, Okay, let me just put another one up. What? Yeah, okay, hang on. Okay, you'll hear this in a lot of colloquial expressions, okay? Uh, T plus U is going to sound like cha. Set cha back. It sets you back quite a bit. Yeah, what you doing? Hey, what you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Yeah, okay. Um, lots of kind of colloquial combinations with uh, interrogatives, the, the what, um, what, where, when words. What you doing? Hey, what? Uh, um, and, and then, of course, D plus U. Uh, all right. Um, did you did go? Did you go to the show? Ja. Did ja. Would ya? Would you do it? Could ya? Could ya? Why can't ya? And now back to CH. Could ya? Why not? Why can't ya? Okay. What you doing? All right. Okay. Moving on. Uh, next one. Gregory. Let's see. Where are we? Number four. Ryan says she's the most beautiful girl he's ever seen. I have no idea. Maybe A. Are you sure she wasn't putting, putting it on? Uh, 
I could see why you'd say that, but no. That's not it. Let me see. Yeah, okay. And this one would be hard to know if you didn't know. All right, he really lays it on a bit thick. Okay, when we compliment people, I think we talked about this in class last week, like a couple of different classes I had. Yes. Yeah, Norel, you were there? Okay. Yeah, it was uh, one of the classmates talking about her friend giving her some flattery, flattering her. Uh, flattering then, her, you're right. Yeah, then then you tell her she lays it on a bit thick. <laughs> right, right. When someone uh, flatters somebody and flatters them in a kind of, oh, well, over the top, a little too much, many compliments. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're laying it on a bit thick. Uh, right, okay. Well, number five. How did he How react? How did he react? Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yes. Oh, well, teacher. Okay. How did he react when he failed his driving test? Um, he was really cut up about it. Indeed, he was. Okay. All right. If someone is, and we. Uh, Oh, okay, here's a, another element of colloquial expressions. In some cases, you might think that the colloquial expression here is cut up uh, as a phrasal verb, of course, a verb and a, again, preposition acting as an adverbial particle, uh, which it can be. Um, it can also be a phrasal noun. A cut up is a comedian. He cuts up in class. He makes jokes. Yes, it can be, but in this case, we actually have an adverb with it. Really cut up to describe someone who is really uh, emotionally hurt. Uh, and and if we mean it, if we have that meaning, really emotionally hurt, we're almost certainly going to use the adverb with it. Uh, we might use a different adverb, however. I could say he was terribly cut up. Possibly. But I probably would never say he was cut up about it. It's kind of a little strange thing, but sometimes the uh, it, it actually makes the meaning clearer if we're adding uh, an adverb. Okay, seeing you, last one here. I'm sure you can get this one. <laughs> Lorraine sounded very ill. Hey, are hey. you sure she wasn't putting it on? Putting okay. It on? Yes. Okay, obviously, it's the only answer left. Now, uh, one thing I need to point out here, uh, okay, is that uh, this, this is... Uh, this is kind of the British usage. Are you sure she wasn't putting it on? An American would say, are you sure she wasn't putting you on? Uh, okay, putting it on, putting you on, Americans would use uh, a pronoun related to a person. Okay, British say putting it on, meaning she's acting. Uh, an American would say putting you on, meaning she's acting in order to fool you. Actually, both mean pretty much the same thing. Okay, and there's an element of where colloquialisms can be very similar in different uh, different areas, but maybe slightly different. Um, there are many phrasal verbs which uh, are extremely similar British and American but maybe have a different maybe have a different uh, particle for example um, come around and come round for example there's actually quite a few all right let's try another set uh, 
Okay, uh, uh, Gregory, I won't make you go first this time since... Narelle, why don't you go first this time? Okay. Right. Do, you, do you think Jenny really sent him those flowers? Okay. Oh, sure. Fly away. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, okay. No. <laughs> Not exactly. Uh, no. You have any other Not ideas? exactly. No. No. Uh, I will go with. I wouldn't put it past her. Ah, uh, indeed. Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, do you know what that means? This is a very common, I don't, a common colloquialism which I like never teach in classes, but I should because it's super common in conversational English amongst friends, for example. Do, do you know what this means, Narelle? Um, um, maybe not really, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's kind of tricky. It can be tricky to explain. Well, yes, it can. So I, that's why I was hoping you, you could do it for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry no to this me. Uh, uh, it's okay. I wouldn't put it past her. Um, okay, in a longer form might be something like, uh, I wouldn't doubt that that is something that she might do. All right. I, I think that's... It's very possible. It seems like it's in her character. Okay. Uh, did you hear that, uh, for example, did you hear that uh, John got arrested for being drunk and punching a policeman? I wouldn't put it past him. Sounds like something he would do. Okay, when we... Usually the, in this exactly this sort of circumstance where we hear about somebody else secondhand we hear information about somebody else this is a very common colloquial phrase to sounds to say yes it's I believe it it's in that person's character to do this uh, it could be it could be you could be talking about a future thing uh, I think he's gonna they shouldn't get married because he will cheat on her uh, you might say, I wouldn't put it past him to do that in the future, okay? So it's more about, rather than past, present, future, it's more about it's in that person's character. Very Okay, very common, of course, we're talking about other people. It's gossip colloquialisms <laughs> when we're talking about other people. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Uh, you will definitely hear people gossiping say this. It's very common. Uh, uh, <laughs> welcome to the class, Rita. Hi, Peter. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. We're, uh, we're doing a little mix and match with uh, colloquialisms. I'm going to come back to you so you get an idea what we're doing. Okay? All right. Okay. Not only that, but I, I didn't want to just suddenly greet Rita by reading number two. So I'll, uh, I'll save this for Zingyu. Zingyu, how about a kiss then? <laughs> he kissed his wife. <laughs> I have, uh, I have uh, out, counted out. You are old enough to be my father. Ah, yeah, there you go. Okay, very good. Cut it out, and okay, cut it out is definitely a short phrase which you should recognize or use if you choose, but definitely um, you need to understand this because this is super common in English. Uh, what does cut it out mean, Zingyu? Cut it out. Shut up. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> no. Cut it out, oh. you. Cut it out. Stop. Yes. That's it. Very good. Stop it. Oh, stop it. Cut it out. 
Notice, uh, once again, I'm joining these sounds very, very closely. It sounds like one word. I don't say cut it out. I say cut it out. Can cut it out. out. Oh, stop it. it. You're being ridiculous. Cut it out. Uh, and even the second phrase here, really, this is a classic. I would even say this is colloquial. You're old enough to be my father. <laughs> yeah. And I think we can all figure out where that's used and why. Yeah, okay. I'll leave that up to your imagination. All right, Gregory. Yes, Let's try the next one. They always manage to make a success of whatever they do. Hmm. Say certain do. E. You go to find it for them. I want you. Okay. You got to hand it to them, haven't you? Uh, Gregory, what do I have to hand to them? <laughs> 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 My goodness. Uh, Gregory, uh, this phrase could also, you'd also often hear, hear this as well. Uh, give them credit. Instead of you've got to hand it to them, you've got to give them credit. All right. Uh, what, what do I, what do I, what does that mean, Gregory? Give someone, I gotta give you credit, I've gotta hand it to you. I've got, oh, here's another one, I've gotta tip my cap to you. Gregory, you have any idea? If I tip my cap to you, do you know what that means? Okay, A anybody? Uh, maybe I tip my cap to you. Uh. Yeah, go ahead, Nora. Oh, uh, maybe uh, I give you credit. <laughs> well, yeah, you give them credit. <laughs> yes, you hand it to someone. You, you're. It's a sign of respect. You've got to give them respect. You've got to. Uh, okay, you. All right, you've got to recognize something good all right all right that that's basically it that's a sign of respect actually in uh, most English speaking cultures if you're wearing a hat and you uh, lift your hat and maybe bow your head slightly that's a sign of respect to somebody uh, which in mm. not so much anymore but of course older times you know uh, a uh, gentleman should always tip his cap to a lady, for example. Okay. Uh, Rita, can I ask you a question? Okay. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Actually, number four, can I ask you a question? <laughs> what, is the, what is the best response here? Um, a, B, C, this side uh, of the... Of the screen okay. share, these are responses. I, I, um, I don't know exactly, but uh, I guess C. Sure. Um, yes, but it really takes it out of you. I oh. was exhausted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought you said B. Okay. Oh, it's, I, it's, I say C. I'm sorry. You said B, but you read C. <laughs> oh, silly. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll give you a half credit for that one. Can I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Fire away. Okay. Um, fire away. Okay. We say this, fire away. is very, another very common colloquialism, which means go ahead and ask a question. Uh, yeah. Interestingly... Uh, another way to say go ahead and talk is we, we might say shoot. 
Go ahead, shoot. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, fire away actually is is used for questions. Uh, when somebody uh, very politely asks, "Can I ask you a question?" Fire away. Uh, okay. Let's turn here. Where'd Gregory go? Okay, Norel. Yes. Number five. Oliver. Yeah. Oliver. Oliver says he's got three grandchildren. Okay, and uh, there's no more choices. <laughs> uh, well, what's left? Uh, da -da -da -da. What's left? Right. It's C. C, or we've got A. Oh, C and A, yes. Uh, get away. He doesn't look more than three. Yes, get away. He doesn't look more than three. Okay. All right. Three grandchildren. All right. Obviously, A is responding because it's hard to believe. Uh, they're incredulous. They're in disbelief, an expression of disbelief. Get away. Okay. Very British. Very, very British. What does an American say, Norel? Do you know? This is really common in popular yes. American culture, TV and the movies. You're kidding. Okay, you're yes, kidding. you're right. You're kidding. You're kidding. Very good. Expressions of disbelief. Excellent. Uh, Zingyu, can you think of an expression of disbelief in English? You're kidding. Get away. What else? You make a joke. Oh, well, oh, wow. that's way too formally. <laughs> you're joking. It would probably be more like you're joking in the colloquial, casual, conversational way. You're joking. Oh, okay. no way. No way. Yes. No and way. you got to, very good. You've got to have the intonation to, that shows disbelief. No way. Yes, way. <laughs> yes, way. Excellent. Very good. That is that is the normal colloquial response. Yeah, I heard that in the conversation in the TOEFL today. Really? The TOEFL? The two students in question five. Ah, the two okay. Students, no the kidding. The male student, yes, was giving his solution and the woman told him, no way. And he said, yes, way. And um, wow. it was okay. a little... I, I, yeah. I think TOEFL, the TOEFL test is evolving to use much more colloquial language, actually. Yes, yes. It used to be more formal years past. I think they're moving in that direction, mm -hmm. especially the conversations, of course. Naturally, that's where colloquial language happens. Uh, Rita, can you, give, uh, can you give one more expression of surprise? Okay. No way. You're kidding. Teacher? Yes. Uh, surprise, it's disbelief or it's something yes. else? Dis disbelief. Oh, disbelief, disbelief. And surprise. I, disbelief and surprise are, are have shared exclamations, yes. No way. Uh, you're probably surprised and disbelief, for example. Mm -hmm. A surprise um, party. <laughs> what? <laughs> Surprise party? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, it's a phrase we use when we when we don't believe. Uh, I tell you, if I tell you something crazy, uh, if I tell you, Rita, you've won the lottery. Um, um, You're a millionaire. Congratulations. <laughs> no, I'm not a millionaire. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. What are you gonna say if I say? If I say you won a million dollars, what? How can you show you're shocked and you can't believe it? Oh, uh, uh, there's a surprise. Um, yeah. Uh, My God. O M G. <laughs> okay. Oh, O M G. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Now this is becoming common. It's a little annoying, but oh, I guess we have to 
We have to. Yes, you got it. Oh my God. O M G. I can't believe it. <laughs> All right. You know. Okay. I was trying to milk this one. I was trying to get you guys to say this. Okay. But the expression I was looking for uh, in. England, they may say get away, but in American, Americans never say that. Americans would say get out. No way. No way is very common. Get out. Or sometimes. Get out. Well, okay. It's odd, but let me try to explain a little further because it's a little bit interesting. Get out of Dodge. Okay. Do you have any idea where that comes from? Of course you don't. It's very American culture. Uh, Dutch, uh, it's uh, the game. Dutch, Dutch ball. Dutch mm, yes, dodgeball is a game. Yeah, yeah that's it's right. Game, but, yeah. but this is a reference to Dodge City. Dodge City, Kansas. This is a cowboy reference. Um, oh. Get out of Dodge. Uh, okay, we use this a couple of ways. We use it to mean run away quickly. All right, the former president of Ukraine wasted no time getting out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's perfectly appropriate. Or sometimes that we use it as an exclama exclamation of shock, of shock and disbelief. Get out of Dodge. Uh, okay, it has to do with uh, uh, a famous story of a criminal shootout in Dodge City and the criminals had to leave town really quickly. Uh, anyway, get out is very common. Uh, all right, where are we? Zingyo, last one here. Did you enjoy your climb? Zingyo keeps getting the last one. So easy. Yes, see. Si. <laughs> yes, si, yes. But uh, it uh, really take it, takes it out of you. I was exhausted. Exhausted. Um, yes, okay, that is the correct choice. I slightly disagree with the with the answer, I, I it seems a little odd to me, actually. Maybe that's because it's British. It takes it out of you, perhaps. Slightly changed for, for me as an American. It takes a lot out of you is what... is how I would uh, be... Uh, is what I would be familiar with, the construction I would be familiar with. It takes a lot out of you. Anything that takes a lot of energy and a lot of will takes a lot out of you. But wait, that's not all. There's more. There's tons. But teacher, when you say it takes a lot, uh, it takes a lot out of me, not of you. Uh, because you are answering the question. Uh, well, okay. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> Did you enjoy... Uh, a climb, yes, but it really takes it out of you. Um, yeah, we're using the you as the general oh, you. Oh, okay, yes. We're using it as you, like all, everybody, anybody, uh, as a general. So hiking, hiking on that mountain takes a lot out of you. Okay. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Taking the TOEFL exam takes a lot out of you. Not you, yes. exactly, but you, anybody I mean, who, takes, who takes the TOEFL test. <laughs> you feel like a used dish rag when you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. All righty. Uh, let's make Zingyu go first this time. Zingyu, where'd you go? Oh, he disappeared. All right, Rita, you can try it. Mm, All right, that's what? A difficult question. Oh, well, you can make a guess. The scenery was magnificent, wasn't it? Okay, um, maybe. Um. Hmm. 
Here's a Maybe clue for a, you. A. Here's a clue for you, Rita. I'm going to help you out a little bit with this type of exercise. Okay. Okay. Now, um, we're looking at, uh, these are conversations, the, the left side, one, two, three, four, five, the person says this. And B out with, sorry, A, B, C, D, E, the person answers. These are answer, B. response, dialogue. Okay, B. wait a second, wait a second. Okay. Uh, let me finish. Notice the subject of number one, the scenery was magnificent. Notice that all these responses uh, start uh, because we know what the proper noun is children. Uh, the boss, the midnight movie, Martha. Uh, notice the responses. This is very common. We're looking at colloquial English. We might as well look at the fact that in conversational English, we're going to answer using a pronoun as the subject because we already know what we're talking about. We're talking about the scenery, the children, the boss. Okay. So the pronoun and the answer should match the subject of, of the question or the, the first uh, statement, all right? So the scenery was magnificent, wasn't it? The scenery can't be he or she, right? He, yeah, um, he, he come... Okay, this Well, no, because the scenery isn't a he. The scenery is neutral. So it's going to be on. Oh, if she does, uh, they will soon cut her down to size. Well, now we've got she. <laughs> so oh, I, I I guess a no, 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 no. See, we've got to match the answer, the subject, pro, the pronoun, subject pronoun in the answer has to match the subject pronoun of the initial question or statement. So the scenery is it. You really have only two oh. choices. Okay. okay. It scared the pants off me, which would be really weird. The scenery was magnificent, terrifying, it scared the pants off me, <laughs> which would be a weird thing to say about scenery, of course, <laughs> maybe, or F, it certainly was, it took my well, breath away. Is it true? Yes. Well, this is a tag question, so it should mm -hmm. be answered by was. It was because she says wasn't wasn't it? Yes, yes it and was. it is. is. It is. Oh, it is it. answered by was. It just has a. Uh, we need to put the um, adverb in front of the verb. That's the the rule. Oh no. Oh yeah. So I thought. I thought you choose e. Oh no no! I was laughing about that. <laughs> that would be a silly silly oh, answer. Okay. It just made me yeah. laugh. If you told me the scenery is beautiful, oh, it's so beautiful. The peaceful <laughs> meadow <laughs> with the sheep playing in the flowers. And I answered you, oh, it's really terrifying. It scares the pants off me. You would, of course, think I was a lunatic, which, in fact, perhaps I am. Okay. But you are absolutely correct, uh, Norel. Your assessment is correct. It wasn't it? And then uh, the answer... Also, there's another big clue, which is the answer. It certainly was. Okay, yeah. it has to match the question, and you're absolutely correct. It does have to be that way, and so there it is. It took my breath away, which is the uh, idiom widely used uh, wherever, England, Australia, Canada, America, meaning something that was so beautiful or so inspiring it left you breathless. Uh, it really moved you in, in an emotional way. Okay, Zingyo, you're back. Hello, teacher. Hello again. Uh, my collection is always broken because the 
the before the prohibition of our government. Okay. Okay. Anyway. I I, hmm. I finally join again. Okay. I'm very happy. Okay. Well, I'm happy to have you. I always with you. <laughs> well, likewise. <laughs> okay. Zing you. Number two. Those no, children. Two. Those mm. children those are children making a are terrible, making noise. terrible noise. Yeah. Really terrifying. Me to scare the pants of me. Oh, <laughs> I like <laughs> that. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> really, Zingyu, are you terrified of of children? <laughs> oh, uh, in the in the Chinese festival spring, and some children always uh -huh. uh, always play the fireworks. Ah, <laughs> ah. <laughs> really? Oh boy. Okay, I guess that could be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So some children throw the firework into my garden. They do. They do. Mm. They often scare the. They often scare the my dogs. <laughs> oh my goodness. My dog. Is, my dog is uh, always barking. <laughs> oh wow! You should let your dog loose. Go get the children. Okay. Anyway. Okay, I'll tell you exactly what I told Rita. The subject noun has to match. So, what it would be the pronoun we use for those children? What pronoun would we use, Zingyu? Um, it. Oh, oh, oh. No. <laughs> They, 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 yes. They, 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 they. Yes, they. yes, yes. So we, we only have one possible answer here, and that would be D. They're only letting off steam. Okay. Lots of idioms, colloquial expressions, collocations that have to do with the concept of really boiling water and pots and steam and venting if you vent you uh, release tension or stress by expressing whatever's on your mind maybe in an emotional way children letting off steam are venting all their energy they're they're burning off their energy lots of uh, expressions that have to do with steam and heat definitely uh, so if you're what do you do to let off steam uh, Darrell what do you do to let off steam well what well, let, let it let it cool <laughs> no if you have a lot of people for example exercise to let off steam they burn up extra energy and stress Okay. Oh, I see. Ah, yeah. No, okay. Instead of seeing, I release my energy. Yeah, I you can let say off steam. Let off. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it exactly. Very good. Okay. Exactly. Um, sometimes uh, people say, oh, you need to get out of the house. Let's go out. Let's go to some nightclubs. You need to let off some steam. Okay. You need to... Relax and relieve stress. That would be a very common way to use it. But uh, I okay. have to add something before steam, like a pronoun my, my steam. I well, let off my steam. Uh, you, well, really know you probably wouldn't use a pronoun, let off my steam. Get rid of my. I need to let off steam, is how you would say it. Hmm. Okay, you understand? You wouldn't yeah. stick a pronoun okay, in there. I have a question. Yes. The the number two choose the number two choose D. The number two, number two choice is D. Oh, 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 oh. For a couple of reasons, oh, oh. because those I, children is 
I made a mistake. Yes, you did. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Uh, it's not your fault that children in your neighborhood are scary. <laughs> well, okay. Narelle, how about number three? Number three, what will happen when the boss finds out about the next step? Uh -huh. He will come down on me like a ton of bricks. Yeah, yeah. Whew, not good. Come down on Ooh. someone like a ton of bricks. Okay, clearly that's not a positive. <laughs> Obviously, a negative. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, meaning the boss will really give you a hard time. Right, okay. We're almost out of time. Uh, okay, Rita, what was the midnight movie like? Um, the midnight movie. Maybe um, A. Uh, no. Uh, okay. Remember, we have to match. The midnight movie is not a he or a she. <laughs> um, it's it's uh -huh. chap chapter uh chapter was uh is took my break away. Well, okay, you're getting closer, but uh, I couldn't say uh, what was the really, movie like. It was. Uh, really, Terry, ah. it scared the pain off me. Pants. pants. <laughs> what you wear on your lower body. It scared the pants off me. And yes, this sounds very ridiculous and funny, but this is very common. Okay. Oh, my goodness. It scared the pants off me. Okay. Right. That's terrifying. Me. What? <laughs> That's me. What's that? That's what that does what does it mean? It what? means it was really scary. Even your clothes were scared? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the direct meaning or I have no idea the etymology, the history. Where does that come from? I have yeah, no clue <laughs> what genius made up that phrase. I, I have no idea. I would love to know, but I really don't know. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, last two. I'm basically out of time. So do you think Martha will try to boss them around? Boss someone around. Boss around of a phrasal verb meaning all right you try to tell everyone what to do if she does they'll soon cut her down to size mm -hmm. okay all right you cut someone down to size you okay you <laughs> you give it right back to them <laughs> you you don't let them boss you around uh, last one how did he react when she walked out on him? He put on a brave face. Okay, he acted brave. But you could see he was upset. Okay, that's it. I'm out of time. I've got to go because I've got to come back here at Verbling for our conversation class. Hopefully you learned some useful phrases today, which you can use in English conversations. I hope so. All right. Very useful. Yes. Thank you. I Thank hope you, so. Thank you, teacher. Bye, right. teacher. Bye, Bye. 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 See you guys again next time.